So today we're going to go over links. It confuses a lot of people because when it comes to search engine optimization, there's so many different tasks that goes on your to-do list, links being one of them, that links kind of gets lost in the bunch of your tasks. But links is the sole factor in SEO which is going to rank your website. Doesn't matter doesn't matter if you're going to optimize your content, optimize your title, optimize your meta tag, doesn't matter what you do to your website, links will still beat any SEO factor. In fact, if you have enough links pointing to your website, and we're going to go over what kind of links, relevancy, and so on, but if you do the links the right way and you have enough of them pointing to your website, it doesn't matter how many SEO factors you're going to have on your website, links the sole SEO factor is going to beat all the other factors on your website. So in other words, links should be on top of your list above anything that you do in your business until you're happy with the revenue you're making and until you're happy with the traffic that you're making. So to clarify what is links, because a lot of people think links is just like a URL pointing to your website. They don't understand the concept of it. I'm going to give you the definition in a second, but let me first explain to you why you need links. So imagine that you have a physical store. You know, a lot of people are new to the internet, so everything is sort of, it sounds gibberish to them when I say, you know, you need links. So imagine you having a physical store, and if you have flyers and business cards, this is what links are to your online business. So in other words, let's say uh, you have flyers, you go on the corner, and you start giving out flyers to walk by traffic. Those flyers are going to direct people to read about who you are and direct them to your store's address. Could be at an online address or physical address. So when you give out flyers, you're actually giving out people like these advertisements and so on to visit your store. Same thing as business cards. People come to your business, you give them business cards to call, or you meet someone, you give them a business card to call. So when you give out flyers and business cards, you're directing people to visit your business location. When you do links for your online business, you're giving the search engines your flyers and business cards. Okay, You're giving them the flyers and business cards so they can point their algorithms to your website. And obviously, if they point their algorithms to your website, then the traffic that's searching on the search engine will come to your website. Links is like the voting poll for the internet. So just like you vote for the president, just like you vote for your congressman and so on, links is the voting poll for your website. So the more links you have, and obviously the more relevant links you have, the higher you get in the polls, aka search engine ranking. So if you have more links than your competitor, relevant links, you're going to be higher than your competitor. It doesn't matter what your competitor has, SEO factors on his website. I don't care how much content he has optimized on his website. If you have more links than him, you will be above him. Okay? Voting and links, it's like, you know, the same thing. So voting, you do it, you know, physically. I mean, you can do it online as well, but, you know, you do voting physically. So links is like voting for the website. Links is also like back in high school when you have these little you know groups of friends that get together and obviously certain people are more popular than other people and the reason why they're popular because you know more people know about them and and you know the most popular kid in school is going to be everybody knows about him. So again, links is what makes you popular. The more links you have not only do all the people on the internet know about you, but also the search engines know about you, and that's how you know your website becomes popular. So, in other words, links is what's going to make your website number one on Google, number one on Yahoo, and number one on Bing, and also hundreds of other search engines. Links is what will make your business successful. The only thing you need to do with links is you need to match your competitors' links and exceed them. And when I say match your competitors' links, you also have to match them for the exact keywords that they're trying to rank for. So it's not only about links, it's also about what keyword you're passing in every link. We're going to get into that in a second. 
how do links work? So imagine that one link is like one flyer or one business card or one vote that you would do for your brick and mortar business. So when people ask me, how many links do I need to rank high? Well, it's the same thing as asking me, if I have a brick and mortar store, how many flyers do I need to give out to get traffic and to get sales into my, in my store? And it all comes down to, again, you know, some people are going to say, oh, well, if I have so much traffic, I'm going to get so much sales. That's the same thing as saying, well, if I'm going to give out 1,000 flyers and I'm going to get you know, 200 people coming into my store, I'm going to make a lot of sales. Obviously, traffic is only one part of the factor. Your store, the way it looks, what you sell, the prices and so on is the other factor. But obviously, before you can optimize prices and products and so on, you need to first get the traffic into your store. So basically, imagine that one link is like one flyer or one business card or one vote. And what that means is you can never have enough links. You always need more links. You always want to go out and give out flyers at the, at the trade shows or car shows or whatever or any kind of show. You always want to give out business cards to your friends and everybody and you want to give out business cards to customers to give out business cards to their friends and so on and you want to put business cards into every one of your packages and obviously you know, when it comes to poll, you want everybody to vote for you. You want to be number one. You want to win. That's what links are. You want to have as many links as possible. And the day you stop doing links is the day you start losing your ranking, which is, again, I go back to flyers, business cards, and votes. If you stop giving out flyers at car shows or, you know, your local area, you're going to stop getting new customers. Maybe you're going to get your old customers coming back to you, but your new customers are not going to come to you because they're not going to know about you. Same thing as business cards. You're going to stop giving out business cards. People are not going to know that you exist, new ones specifically. If you're not going to get people talking about you or voting for you, you're not going to be as popular. We always see movie stars or music stars getting really popular, getting number one hits for certain songs, and then five years later, they're nobody. Ten years later, nobody even remembers them. So the reason why, because they stopped coming out with the new content and they stopped getting all those votes from people and eventually people lost interest. So this is the same thing for your website. As soon as you stop doing links, you start losing traffic, you start losing sales, and everything kind of goes downhill. So links is your business. If you want to run your online business, the first thing you have to do is you know if you're doing this yourself and you're, you don't have anyone that you outsource this to first thing in the morning and last thing at night obviously in between you're running your business but you know in the morning when you wake up and you're kind of still sleepy and you, you're ready to read the news instead of reading the news do some links you can read the news and do links theoretically and at night before you close your phone lines do more links how many links you should do, we'll get into that in a second, but never, ever, ever stop doing links. And as long as you're going to continue doing links, you're going to continue getting those flyers and business cards and votes out, and you're going to rank, you're going to get traffic, and eventually you're not even going to notice it. But as you make this a part of your habit, as you make it a part of your business and a part of the things you do every day, you're not even going to notice it, but your traffic is going to eventually skyrocket because the way links work, it, it's not like – you're doing links day by day and you're seeing little results. It's more like you do links here and there and you keep a consistent number every day and then one day you get to the first page and you start seeing some traffic. The day you see a huge spike where you go from like let's say 50 visitors to 200 visitors per day is when you hit your number one spot. I don't care if you're number three number four, number two. I mean, those are great positions, but unless you're number one, you're not getting your full traffic potential for that keyword. And that's the goal here. The goal is to get enough links to become number one for the keyword that you believe will get you the most traffic. And a lot of people rank for many keywords. They get to number one, but they don't get a lot of traffic. So it's a risk. You know, you have to make a logical decision if it's worth getting ranked for a certain keyword and being number one for it and obviously you, you might work really hard for it and then at the end you're not going to get the traffic you expected so it's it's a risk it's going to take a lot of work to to get there but nonetheless you still need links so 
if one keyword doesn't work out, you move on to the next one. So how do links work? Back in the day when search engines just started, each link was counted equally. So one link, one vote, one business card, one flyer. Now one link can give you zero votes, can give you one-fourth of a vote, half of a vote, or a full vote. So what makes a bad link, okay link, good link, and excellent link? So I made a few examples here. Let's say you have a flyer that you post on, on the wall, right? If you're going to take an automotive flyer promoting you know, car accessories, and you put it in an elementary school where your target market is <laughs> nine years old or eight years old, and you're going to put a lot of them, you're obviously not being relevant to your target market. You know, nobody's going to buy your automotive parts from an elementary school. So the way Google sees it is they don't consider this relevant, so they don't honor that link. So they give you zero votes for it. So you might do a lot of bad links and not get any results and get frustrated, like, why are you not getting results? Because you're doing bad links. Sometimes you can even do a bad link where it gives you a negative vote and sometimes it's penalizes you completely because you're linking to casino sites or adult sites and so on when you're an automotive site, so obviously that's going to happen. So another bad link would be posting an automotive flyer in a beauty salon where you, know, you have old ladies getting their nails done. None of them are going to care about your automotive parts. Sure, maybe one of them out of the year will buy something, but most likely not, and that's considered a bad link. OK link is posting an automotive flyer in a grocery store. It's not great, but hey, you never know. Maybe some guy is going to stop by to buy cigarettes or something and check out your flyer and might contact you if they're interested. So grocery store, it's like general market. You, you don't know who's going to show up there, so it's an OK link. In other words, you'll get some cookie points for it. A good link is posting an automotive flyer in a repair shop. Right, it's relevant. It doesn't have to be an automotive repair shop. It could be a boating repair shop. Nonetheless, it's something that has to do with machinery, something that has to do maybe in automotive industry. So that's considered a good link. You're going to get a vote for that. Maybe not a full vote, but definitely have a vote. The best link you can possibly get is putting a flyer in a very relevant place, and such as a car club. So you sell something on your website for a specific vehicle and you put your flyer or link in the car club. So an example online would be putting a link, let's say you're doing Nissan 350Zs niche, and you put a link on a Nissan 350Z form. That's an excellent link. You're going to get a full vote for that. And if you get enough of those links, you're going to have really relevant links pointing to your website. So this is how links works. How do you rank higher than your competitor? You match your competitor and exceed. So whoever is number one today for the keyword you want to rank for, you do some research, I'll show you how, you need to beat him at his own game. You need to have more relevant links. Keep in mind that I didn't say links, I said relevant links. So he might have 400 relevant links, which means it's going to be kind of hard for you to go and find 400 relevant links to compete with him. But we'll get into that in the next slide or so. Bottom line is that you want to match your competitor and exceed. And think about it from a brick and mortar perspective. If your competitor next door is competing with you and he's standing on a corner giving out a thousand flyers every single day, if you go out and you start giving out 50 flyers or, or 100 flyers, you're obviously not going to reach the same target market as him, right? So you want to give out a 1,000 flyers also so you can reach his customers, the same customers he gives out the flyers to. And if you give out 2,000 flyers, well, you're obviously going to reach more target market than he does. And that's exactly how the search engines work. If you're going to get more links, so think about it as giving out more flyers towards your website, and you're going to get your number one ranking for the keyword that you're ranking for. So what is a definition of a link? This is just so you understand how this works. So we have a one-way link. What a one-way link means is when a website, and in this case site A, links to site B, but site B doesn't link back to site A. This is the best link you can possibly get. This is a one-way links are the best because you're getting the full page rank and the full vote from that website, and you're not sharing it back with them. So Google really loves that one-way links is the best way you can do it. Two-way links 
you know, the, normally what the practice is, if you believe that, you know, your traffic can benefit one website and that website believes that their traffic can benefit your website, you trade links. So you put a link on their website, they put it on your website, and basically site A links to site B and site B links to site A. That's considered a two-way link exchange. Three-way link exchange is when site A links to site B and then site B guy owns site C, so he links site C to site A. I do not recommend you do three-way link exchanges. Just don't do them. <laughs> Inbound link means a link pointing to your website from another website. Outbound link means a link pointing from your website to another website. So basically inbound, it's coming to your website from somebody's website. Outbound, it's coming from your website to somebody's website. Raw backlink means you actually see the URL. So it's HTTP www.whateverdomain.com. That's a raw link. An anchor link or anchor text is when you have a keyword. In this case, I have a my rich keyword, and we want to put rich keywords in here. And that link is pointing to this URL behind it. So that's what an anchor link is or anchor text. Follow and no follow tags. Websites are allowed to put a follow or a no follow tag on the links. What that means is if they have a follow, that means that they're passing the votes to that link. So in other words, they're telling Google, go ahead and, and go to this link. If they have a no follow, that means that they're saying, do not go to this link, do not give them any votes. You shouldn't avoid doing the no follow links because Google still honors it. Maybe not to its full potential, but they do honor it. But the best links you can possibly get is the follow links. So the people that do give you the full vote for it. How do you know if a link is follow or no follow? I mean, most of them are follow, but if you really want to know, you can download an add-on extension for Firefox. You can just go to Firefox and go to here. So you go to Firefox, click on Firebug, add-ons, and you can do like, I believe it's like do follow add-on. It's not this one, but you can just browse all, all add-ons and just put down do follow links. You'll end up getting it. And you would activate it on any website. And if it's a do follow, then it would be blue. If it's a no follow, it would be red. I don't bother checking them. I just do all links, so I don't really care if they're a follow or not, no follow. So what kind of links exist? You know, how can you do links? The typical way, what everybody knows, is two-way link exchange. You go to somebody's website and you submit your website to them, you add their website to your website, and that's a two-way link exchange. This is how you can get one-way link exchanges. So you can do article linking. I'm not going to go into details on all of these, but if any of them don't make sense, just put it in the chat and I'll, I'll address it later. But basically, you can do article linking, submitting articles to like eZine and so on, putting your link there. Article network linking, which is an article network aggregator, which you post one article and they submit it for you everywhere. You can do form profile pages, so form where people talk about their car or whatever. You can do the form signature. You can put a link in the form post with or without an invisible link. I'm going to be discussing all these for tomorrow's meeting. That's the private meeting. So you can do indexing, web 2.0 sites with RSS feeds, blog comments. So basically, these are all comments. Bookmark links. There's a bunch of bookmarking sites that you can do links. Social profiles, such as Facebook and so on. You can do Twitter linking, so posting your links on Twitter, posting links on Craigslist, posting links on videos. So all those would make it a one-way link to your website. Today, we're going to discuss two-way link exchanges, and I'm going to try to jump in into article linking. The rest of them we're going to go over tomorrow. So two-way linking. Remember I told you that you need to match and exceed your competitor? Well, this is how you can find out which links your competitor has. Just go to Yahoo, and all you need to do is just type in site www.domain.com. Obviously, instead of the domain, you're going to put your competitor. Let's put bodykids.com. Okay. 
guess it's a bad example because they've been around for too long. <laughs> As you can see, they have a lot of links. Let me actually do this. Let me just type in something like bodykids.com in here. Let's find someone. Let's do this one, grounddynamics.com, for example. Okay. It's fine. They all have a lot of links. Let's just work with what we have. You're going to click on in links. When it says show in links, you want to say accept from this domain because we don't want to see the links coming from this domain. We want to see their competitors. Obviously, some of these websites that are ranked high for body kits, I mean, this is a very big keyword, and they've been around since the year 2000, so they had 10 years ahead of you to rank for them. They have 27,000 links. It's a lot of links. The way you exceed is you can first tap into all of their links so you can visit some of these websites let me just click on one of them and most of these websites will have a link exchange somewhere either on top or somewhere in the bottom or so on so somewhere here they're gonna have a way for you to submit their link you would just look around find it and submit your link there so this is how you would see what your competitors have and you would try to go to all of their link partners to do this. Now, this is the other way of finding links. So you can do this on Google, you can do this on Yahoo, it doesn't matter. And I know some people get really scared that there's 27,000 links. First of all, a lot of the links might not be relevant, like I said before. Someone just asked the question, how do you get 27,000 links? That's for tomorrow's webinar. I'm going to show you how to get 100,000 links, 200,000, you name it. You're going to have it in a few months if you want to. But you need to understand the manual concept first. And that's what I'm explaining to you right now. You need to understand how to manually get those links if you work really hard and you'll get it. And this is a really, let me just go back and find a less competitive keyword so I don't scare you away. How about webinar? Since I'm ranked for it, I'm just going to <laughs> show you how many links it took to get to webinar. And, and the other thing is, just because he has 27,000 links, it does not mean all 27,000 are for the term body kids. That's another thing, that there could be 27,000 links and only 100 of them are for body kids. So you're trying to rank for the keyword, not just the amount of links. But for secret weapon performance, you see I'm number four here, number three, four on Yahoo out of 61 million results. Okay, it's a lot of results here. And I was only ranking for the term webinar. And on Google, I'm number two for the term webinar, right? So just to give you an idea, this is how many links Secret Weapon Performance has. Okay, 238, okay, nothing crazy, not, not 27,000. But because I have all 238 for the term webinar and some other keywords, I was able to reach this high of a position out of 61 million results, okay? And if, you, and if we just, just to give you an example, like Amazon, you know, they have 100,000 links, maybe a million links, okay? They're below me because they're not ranking for the term Weapon R. I know that, let's say this guy wants to rank for Weapon R. See, he's number 10 on Yahoo. So if you see how many in links he has, let me just ex accept from this domain. He has 1,000 links from outside of his domain. Okay, so a thousand links. But I have 238. The reason why I beat him in his own game because I'm doing the links right, doing it right with my anchor text, and I'll show you that in the next slide how I do it right. And I'm just trying to rank for Weapon R. I'm not trying to rank for anything else. He's probably trying to rank for all kinds of things. I'm just trying to do Weapon R. That's all I'm doing. So basically, don't get scared that you need to have that many links. You know, 300 links is good you can get that many. All right, so how can you find two-way links? I gave you a, a URL here, okay? It's a Google Guide for Advanced Operators, and since you're doing links, you're an advanced operator. These are probably terms, some of you might be familiar with them, some of you probably not, but these are terms, they're regular expressions that Google has within their search engine that you can use to find what you need. So if you go to this website, it tells you what the term is, and it tells you what this term will do if you put it into the search box. I recommend for you to go through all of them 
and get familiar with how to use Google because you probably had no idea that you can use any of these. This is self-explanatory. I'm looking for inside a title, I want to have the term ad and the term URL and I want to be within a certain keyword phrase. So basically I'm going to go to Yahoo and I'm going to say I want to find something that has ad and URL in the title and I want to search for you know, auto parts, so anything that's related to auto parts and has ad and URL in the title, okay? So not a lot, you know, 2,760 links we got, and basically these are all directories which you can submit links to, so there you go, you just got yourself, you know, 2,700 links that you can submit. If you type in auto, so ad plus URL and auto, check it out, 278,000 links that you can submit, okay? So your last question, how do you get 27,000 links? Well, here's 278,000 for you. You know, you can type in anything you want. You can type in body kits. Like I said, you might not get a lot of them, but if you go to Google and type in body kits, you might get more. There's other terms that you can use. You can say in the title, you want to say submit and site, submit an URL, add site, add your site, directory, lists, sites. So all of these is what you want to find in the title. So you want to find websites that have the term links in them or link to us or link us or something like that. So you can say something like, you know, you want to see link us and you want to be within the body kits. So check it out. You got bodykids.org link to us. Okay, you can submit your link. You have car body kit store link to us. Submit your link. You got a bunch of shopping car lead websites <laughs> that have the link to us in the title. So there's a lot of places that you can do link. You can just type in link and title and I'm sure you're going to get a bunch as well. You know, you got 26,000 results. So in other words, finding two-way link exchanges should not be a problem. You should not have a difficulty finding two-way link exchanges. We're going to get into, uh, in the next slide, but I'll tell you how many you need to do. Another thing I like to do is search for in URL. So you can do in title and then you can do all in URL. What that means is you're looking for a term inside the actual URL address. So www.domain.com forward slash and whatever keyword you want. So in the URL you might want to search for form where you can post your profile and signature and have a link there pointing to your website. If you specialize in Chrysler 300 or something like that you can open up a profile on a Chrysler 300 website and make a few posts and make a signature and there you go, you just got yourself a one-way link from there. You can do the same thing, all in URL links, all in URL, add your site, whatever. So you can easily find a million sites, that's a million links for you, it should keep, it should keep you busy, it should not be a problem finding link partners. I like this software, Scrapebox.com. I don't know how long this coupon will be valid for, I don't get commission for it, so just for you. If you type in scrapebox.com slash bhw, you can buy it for $57. It's normally 200 bucks. And basically what this thing does is it actually finds all the websites for you. So here's a little screenshot. So basically you would say, you know, site whatever, or you can type in what I told you, like uh, add URL or whatever. And you can say scrape, and what it's going to do is going to find all the URLs here for you. It's going to tell you if that URL is indexed, what its page rank is, and then you can keep spidering more and more and more, and then you can keep saying remove duplicates, remove duplicates. So this way you're going to keep a nice, unique link for your link partners. You can do all your sites. You don't have to do one website. Whenever you do link exchanges, if you have two websites or five websites in Shopping Cart Elite or you have other websites or your blogs or whatever, you can link all of them at once. So one link exchange can be a result of five links to five different websites. And if you plan to start another website in the future, you know, whatever links you put into Shopping Cart Elite, you'll be able to export them out from Shopping Cart Elite and import them into your next store in Shopping Cart Elite. So this way, you'll actually save your link partners and go back and do all your links all over again and skyrocket your traffic right away. So this is a pretty cool software. I use it all the time for different reasons, but that's one of the reasons to find your link partners. Okay, so what to avoid and precautions that you should be aware of. Now, I made this very big and bold and red because every time I gave this presentation in the past, people completely ignored what I said. So I'm going to repeat this a few times on this specific slide so you understand it. This is very, very important. If you don't do this, 
don't do links. Just don't bother doing links. Don't bother doing any kind of ranking because you're going to get yourself in trouble and you're not going to do it right. You're going to get frustrated that you're not seeing results. So either do it right, understand what I'm saying here, or don't do it at all. Okay. Google does not want you to do link exchanges. Okay. Google is all about relevancy and natural linking and pure white hat, which means they want your website to rank on its own. You know, in a perfect world, it would work. Unfortunately, we're not in a perfect world, and we have all kinds of people taking advantage of the SEO ranking because, after all, you know, we're competing with millions of sites, and if you want to be number one, <laughs> you know, you, you can't really follow the rules. It's just the way it works in life. I'm sure you, you're aware of it. If you follow the rules and you don't take shortcuts, you're not going to get very far. So Google does not want you to link, but... If you want to link and you have to link in order to beat your competitor because he's linking and the top 10 guys are linking, and in fact, I'm sure the top 30 guys are linking for your keyword, you need to avoid patterns. I'm going to repeat it three times. Avoid patterns, avoid patterns, avoid patterns. Okay? What is a pattern? Well, if you're linking with the same keyword, anchor text, to your website from 10 different websites, that is a pattern. Okay, if I'm, as a human being, if I can go to your 10 link partners, go to their 10 different websites, and see that you linked from their websites 10 times with the same exact keyword, okay, identical keyword, I know that you have been linking. And if you do enough of those, you're not going to get banned or penalized. You're just not going to get any score for those links. It's like caught cheating on a test. You know, the teacher catches you cheating on a test, you fail. That's it. You, you can do 200 links, and then one day you fail, and you lose your rank, and those links are no longer honored, and you lose all your link partners. Basically, it's like doing a crime and leaving a fingerprint. If you leave a fingerprint, then you're going to get caught one day. You might not get caught today or tomorrow, but you will get caught one day, and you're going to lose your links, and you're not, never going to reach your results. So you might get 200 links. You might see some spike in traffic because you're increasing your ranking, and then one day you're going to keep falling back, so you're never going to leave spot 11 or spot 10. Why? Because you have a pattern, because if I can see it with my human eye, Google can see it like the back of their hand, okay? Because Google has all this data aggregated. They have algorithms in place to see patterns and see who's trying to cheat the system, and if you're going to cheat the system, make sure you don't leave any fingerprints. Here's the three common patterns that everyone keeps doing, and I'm going to repeat. If you keep doing it, don't link. It's no point. It's going to be a waste of time. So do not use the same anchor text pointing to your website via link exchanges, two-way link exchanges, or one-way link exchanges. I don't care if you have to change one letter in that anchor text. Do not use the same anchor text to link back to your website. Now, anchor text is a whole different subject. Let me quickly open up Shopping Car Lead because I actually made a huge tutorial about anchor text. And you know what? After I made the tutorial, everyone who read it still got it wrong. It's, it's really amazing. It, it's, uh, I, I just have no comments. So in other words, if you get this right, if you're going to get my anchor text right, you're going to have to pat yourself in the back because you're going to be probably one out of a thousand people that gets it right the first time. And when I say everyone gets it wrong, I'm talking about everyone, including my site builders, including my SEO guys, every, everybody gets these anchor texts wrong. So most likely, you know, you're going to get it wrong. I'm pretty sure you're going to get it wrong. I actually have no doubt about it that you're going to get it wrong, which means you're going to really have to sit down on a clean, fresh head and read this lesson at least five times, practice with the anchor text, try to make logical sense out of it, if you want me to double check your work, you can shoot me an email and tell me, hey, how's my anchor text? And if I tell you that you, you did good, like I said, pat yourself in the back because you're one of the few people. If you go to tutorials in Shopping Cart Elite, so you go to Help Tutorials, and you go to Rank Your Website with Links, check it out. There is a lesson, 30.3.1, Understanding Link Anchor Text. Okay? <laughs> I made it 10 pages long. Okay, 10 pages long talking about anchor text. And the only reason why I did it this long because 
I was surprised by how many people would get it wrong after listening to my lesson, after doing their own research, after actually doing the links. It's amazing. Like I'm talking about the guy was sitting next to me, okay, for three days. I've been teaching him about anchor text. Like literally, he was sitting next to me. I was teaching him about anchor text and links for three days. And then I just let him do his own thing. I thought he got it. He was one of my workers who worked in my office. And he got it wrong. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You, you, you were next to me for three days. You saw what I was doing. How can you get it wrong? And he just didn't get it. And I don't blame him because after trying to you know, be in his position, this is new stuff for him. He doesn't get it. This is like brand new stuff for him. And you just gotta, you just gotta learn. You know, you, you gotta understand it. You gotta learn it. So basically, one of the things I did was, this is one of the guys that I taught anchor texts. Okay, this is the three days worth of anchor text uh, lessons that I did for him. And then I told him, you know, let's do this. Let, let's start training to do a perfect anchor text. I recorded our conversation. Okay, so so basically, I figured I'm gonna show you what he's been telling me, you know, is this a good anchor text? And what I've been telling him back that it's not. And check it out. That was take one. Okay. Huge conversation about it. Take two, take three, take four, take five, take six, take seven. Okay. We had to go through seven tries after spending three days talking about anchor text. So in other words, you know, you're spending like 10 minutes with me about anchor text. I haven't really told you a lot about them, except that you're probably going to get it wrong. But here is a very, very good lesson for you. Read it, understand it, practice it with your anchor text for your specific website. And if you need me to double check your anchor text, just shoot me an email, tell me, hey, I, I came to your webinar, here's my anchor text, what do you think? Is it good or not? And I'll tell you yes or no. But going back to anchor texts, one of the things about anchor text is, let me just open up that lesson real quick. Okay, one of the things about anchor text is that you can rank for more than one keyword at a time. So in other words, you can link to one website and bang out three or four keywords at once with one link. Your one link that you do with the two-way link exchange, you can rank for five keywords at once. So the most common thing that people get wrong with links and anchor text is they do a raw backlink to their website. So they type in www.domainname.com. That's the worst that you can do. Like, why do you even bother? Imagine giving out flyers and instead of giving your store name on the flyer, you give them the address of your store on the flyer without the store name. That's what a raw backlink does. You give an address to your website to the customer or to the search engine in this case, but you don't tell them what your store is about. So it's like giving your flyer and saying, hey, I'm located on you know, 94, whatever, Wall Street. You don't know my business name. Who cares about that? Just come to me. You know, I, I got some cool parts for you. That, that's basically what you're saying. So if you don't put an anchor text, then you, you know, you're, you're driving nothing to your website because nobody's going to come there and search engines obviously not going to come there. Think of this, think of an anchor text as the store name of your, you know, real brick and mortar store, except you can keep changing your name as many times as you want. So you can give out a flyer and say, hey, I sell dash trim kits, here's my address. Or hey, I sell exhaust, here's my address. Or, you know, hey, I sell something else, here's my address. So basically your address is behind the link, right, underneath of the link on the flyer or behind your link. And that your anchor text is what you're selling or what you want to rank for. So the bottom line is that you can rank for multiple keywords in one link, and as you're linking, change your anchor text. You can flip it around. You can say, you know, in this case, I have Cadillac Escalade Borla Exhaust System Dash Trim Kits. You can put Dash Trim Kit without the S. That's perfect. Leave one letter out. Singular plural is perfect. Change a few names. Have a few products. Like, try to make a link exchange. You know, you, you want to have a primary keyword you want to rank for. So, in my case, when I was doing webinar, my primary keyword is webinar. I want to be number one for webinar. But along with webinar, to keep my anchor text different and to try to rank for other stuff, I rank for webinar exhaust, you know, webinar air intakes, webinar cold air intakes, webinar catback exhaust, webinar, webinar headers, and so on. And I can shove webinar cold air intake system exhaust header. You know, I, I can shove more keywords if I want to, and I can keep them different every single time. Let me repeat this. Every single time you have to change your anchor text. 
You cannot repeat it even once. You repeat it once, you're leaving a footprint. You're leaving a fingerprint of your crime. You're going to get caught. That's it. You know, I don't care what you say, but you're going to get caught eventually. Okay, so I hope you understand that concept. I believe I repeated this again. <laughs> Avoid leaving footprints, a.k.a. fingerprints, a.k.a. patterns of your linking that you do on your website. The third one is keep a consistent and reasonable frequency of links. Okay, so th what that means is don't go out and do two, 20 links today and zero tomorrow. Don't go out and do 500 links tomorrow and none this month. You gotta keep a consistent frequency. So what's allowed and what's not allowed? It is allowed for you to get a chunk of one-way links pointing to you like in bulk, like you can get like, you know, thousand links pointing to you at one time. You cannot keep doing that over and over again. You know, one-way links are not two-way links. Imagine you got a really crazy sale, like let's say you have a problem on your website, you, you're selling a product that costs a thousand dollars for a dollar, okay, and, and a lot of people come to your website. All of a sudden, everyone is saying, oh my God, this guy is selling it for a dollar, go buy it, and all of a sudden you have links pointing all over the web to you, thousands of links coming to your website. You know, people use that as a strategy to get some hype for their store, but imagine all of a sudden, Google sees a thousand links pointing to your website. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's natural. <laughs> you know, people naturally pointed links to you. It's a one-way link. So one-way links is not a problem. The problem is the two-way links. As soon as you do two-way links and you start going above the radar, which means you're doing like a very high number, my safe number is three links a day. I recently increased it to six links a day because I need to get my numbers up. But three links is perfectly safe. I've tested this for years. You can do six links, you can do 10, but past 10, you're pushing it. So if you do more than 10 links a day, you're pushing it. Six should be okay. Three is definitely safe. And two-way link exchanges is reciprocal link. That's what two-way link exchange is. Reciprocal link means one you know, website points to you, the other website points to so two-way links. So two-way links you got to keep a low, consistent frequency of links every single day. Don't stop. Do not stop linking tomorrow and after tomorrow. You know, it's going to take you literally five minutes to go and find the site. Just link every single day. Get your three, four hundred links for the keyword. You'll be number one, and hopefully you've made the right choice on what keyword you want to rank for. You make the poor choice on the keyword you want to rank for, you're going to be number one. You're going to get no traffic. You're going to make the right choice. You're going to get, you know, I rank for webinar. I get 2,000 unique visitors per month. Not a huge number but I get an order every single day. So that's good enough for me, not paying any advertising at all. Okay, the next thing, and I'm going to repeat it again. I repeated it once. Learn your anchor text. Learn your anchor text and learn your anchor text, okay? Don't start linking without understanding anchor text. Here is the lesson. I'm telling you right now that you're going to get it wrong, okay, because everyone got it wrong. I've never seen one person getting it right the first time. The reason why I'm telling you you're going to get it wrong because I want you to understand how important it is and I want you to get it right. So if you can grasp the concept that you don't know about anchor text, even though you think you know, you probably don't, just read my lesson, see what mistakes the other guy was making in his seven tries after three days of learning anchor text and try to get it and then you can continue with your linking. So fully understand how Google treats anchor text. Understand that you can rank for multiple keywords in one link. Okay, a lot of people just don't get it. You can rank for more than one keyword with every link exchange you do. It's like giving out a flyer and having I sell dash trim kits, I sell exhausts, I sell air intakes. That's, that's basically what it is. You can have more than one link. For your anchor texts, you need to change your anchor text. It doesn't have to be dramatic change. I'm talking about, you know, singular plural is fine. You can add a keyword, remove a keyword. It doesn't have to be like a crazy change. But, yes, you have to change your anchor text every time you do a link. Every time you do one link, your anchor text should be different. In other words, I shouldn't type in your anchor text and get all your link partners pointing with that same anchor text. That's what a fingerprint is, footprint is, and Google will recognize that. So understand how to build your anchor text the proper way based on the shopping early tutorial. Okay, so if you can get this right, you can make a killing on the traffic, just like I do on every one of my websites. You can do the same exact thing over and over again as long as you understand the concept. So to conclude the anchor text, anchor text is the headline on your flyer. 
anchor text is the sign on your storefront, and anchor text is what people will type in the search engine to find you. Okay, so when you have an anchor text in your link with your link partner, this is the words that people are going to type in Google, and you want your website to be number one. So if that's what you want your website to be number one for, that's the anchor text you use. And please do your research, do your keyword research. Chris did a webinar, whoever missed it, I put it in here, finding keywords to rank for. Here it is, keyword research one of two. There's also a lesson. If you get the wrong keyword, then you're not gonna get sales, you're not gonna get traffic. And when I say get the right keyword, I'm talking about get people to come to your website for the product that you have a very good price on, meaning that you actually worked on getting a good price in that product, and the product is popular and is in demand. If you haven't seen, uh, I, I did a webinar, I was doing research for some of the members for them, using Terapeak to show them what sells, and, and there was one product which was a suspension kit, the member had a poor price and there was no demand for it, okay, so in other words, same thing, you're going to rank for that product that has no demand and you don't have a good price, you're going to get all that traffic and no sales. So before you're going to start linking, make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you have the product with the right price using the Terapeak research and you know, make sure that you're competitive with your price and make sure that that product is in demand and people are actually going to buy it once you get the traffic. It's going to take a while for you to get the traffic. You know, webinar took me three months doing three links a day. It took me three months to get to the first page, I believe number six, and it took me another six months to do, I haven't done three links a day, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't have time, but I did end up getting 300 links and I'm number two right now. So in other words, you know, if you have the time and you can manage three links a day, you get to 300 links, you're probably going to be number two for that keyword or number one, it depends, you know who your competitor is. I mean, I, I am number one for a lot of webinar terms. You know, go to Google. If you type in webinar air intake, let me just do cold air because there's a few keywords that I haven't ranked for. So like number three for the term webinar itself, you know, number two, um, I know the secret weapon intake, I see. I, basically, <laughs> it's a good example of what I said uh, earlier, that as soon as you stop linking, you're going to start dropping ranks. So you need to keep consistent with your links, and once you get to the number one spot, you can't stop. You stop linking, and that's when your competitor is going to take advantage of you and, and get more than you have. It, it, same thing with flyers. You, you're going to get your customer base, and you're going to stop one day giving out flyers, and the next door guy is going to start giving out the flyers to your customers, and you're going to lose your customers. So you can't stop linking. you got to keep, keep a consistent number three a day, and you'll be good. Bottom line is, my main keyword that I wanted to rank for number one is webinar. I'm number two, 2.8 million results. That's my highest traffic keyword. I think I get about 1,800 visitors a month just from this keyword alone. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I'll be even more happier once it hits number one, but I'm competing with webinar themselves, so it, it will take a little bit longer to get to the number one position. Eventually, it will be, be number one. All right, so anchor text is the keywords your store will rank for on the search engine. So match your competitor and exceed. So my competitor is webinar. I haven't checked lately, but let me see how many links they got pointing. Let me just do except their domain. Okay, so webinar has 2,254 links pointing to their website. I'm pretty sure, you know, between all of the websites, the term is webinar. So, you know, I have a long way to get to beat them. But nonetheless, if I'm going to get 2,255 relevant links, I, I will get above them being the number one on Google. Matt with Remus was able to do that for his store. I believe the Remus Exhaust. So you type in Remus Exhaust, he comes up number one above Remus USA. I don't even know where the original website is, but Remus USA is, is the United States distributor and he went above them. So it is possible for you to beat the manufacturer. You just need more links. So match your competitor and exceed. That's all you gotta know, but you also gotta know that it has to be a relevant anchor text and relevant links. We're into an hour. I'm gonna jump through these next slides. Article directories. I'm going to have a video of this. You can pause this page and just get it for yourself. These are just some of the articles that you can submit to and get a one-way link pointing to your website. 
These are some of the article networks that I use. You have to pay for them from $40 to $50 a month. And what they do is you submit one article to them, and they submit it to their network of sites. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but for every five articles I submit, I get about 200 one-way links back pointing to my website. So if you do three links a day plus one article a day on all of these websites, you're going to get a, a lot of links pointing to your site. If you want to use the article network, let me know. I, I might give you access to my account and you can submit some articles. So your next steps, obviously, you know, do it yourself, which I always encourage to do it yourself so you understand how it works. If you go to this link, and I'll just jump to this link on Shopping Cart Elite, go to Download Software, Rank Your Website. So one of the things I have is I have this 12,500 one-way links package, and this is going to be done by two people within a four-month period, which is going to guarantee your number one rank for whatever keyword you want. In fact, we tell you we will rank you up to three primary keywords and 20 secondary keyords. So basically, you get 200 two-way link exchanges, 600 one-way link exchanges, 100 unique articles written, 400 social bookmark links, and 10,000 one-way links from social profiles like forums and stuff like that. It's a lot of work which is why it's so expensive, but if you can afford it, you don't have time, that's solution number one. If you don't want to do it yourself, solution number two, under Buy Shopping Cart Elite, the guys who I hire to do my work, they're in Philippines, they're $3 per hour, okay, which is half of the minimum wage, no payroll tax, like, and, and they're familiar with Shopping Cart Elite and SEO. You know, you can read more about it here, and basically, even if you hire them part time, that's 60 bucks per week for 20 hours. You can hire them at 20 hour intervals. So you can tell them, you know, do my links once a day. You know, it'll take them 30 minutes uh, every single day. And, you know, within two weeks, you'll get your 20 hours worth or whatever, you know, a month or so on. So basically, if you don't want to do it yourself and you value your time more than $3 per hour and you can afford it, you can literally get a full-time worker. I mean, I have about seven of them working for me. You know, Tom with Custom Axima has two of them running his complete customer service, phone lines, emails, processing orders, like the whole nine yards. Like he, he actually has them running his business. They have no accent. You know, they sound American. And basically, you know, we're all startups. You know, most of the guys here are startup businesses. I understand it's, uh, you know, some might say it's wrong to outsource, but we have to do whatever we need to do to expand and survive. You know, if you can't handle it yourself, which most people cannot handle it themselves, you need help. Okay, you, you need to get a, a, a full-time worker or at least a part-time worker to do your stuff for you so you can do some proactive tasks like finding the products to sell, the prices to sell, and tell them what to do and let them do it for you. So this is where this worker comes in, and links is one of the things you can outsource to them. Customer service, phone calls, you can, you can let them answer your phones during business hours, answer your emails, load products, sell on eBay, whatever you can think of, whatever you think you need to do, they can do it for you at three bucks an hour. So like I said, <laughs> if you need help and you can afford it, this is like a no-brainer. I don't know, if you're totally new to this, they probably know more than you, which is one of the things why I, I always encourage you to understand the concept of anchor tax and linking and everything and do it manually first so you can understand how it works first and then outsource it. Because if you outsource it and depend on them to do the job, obviously it's going to be a poor job because they're just following orders. And you might get lucky and get a really smart guy who knows what he's doing, but if you get a guy who simply follows orders and can't think for himself, you're going to just pay him money and not tell him what to do and just let him do something you understand yourself. Nothing good is going to come out of it. So you need to understand how to do it first. You need to practice it, and you need to give him specific instructions on how to do it. And once you give him those specific instructions, he can work for you at three bucks an hour, and you can just check his work, and that's it. And if you invest even a hundred bucks uh, a month on linking and not worry about it, and you know have him do other tasks for you, so instead of you doing a hundred links a month, you could be doing five hundred links a month or a thousand links a month, and 
I think for a hundred bucks uh, and, and in two months, you're going to be ranked number one for a certain keyword. If you're confident that that keyword will bring you traffic that will convert and you will make sales, then I think it's worth it because, you know, you're going to spend money because you don't have time to do it. And then at the end, you're going to make those sales and it's going to pay off uh, in two months. So it's like a return on investment that you have to consider doing. If you want to get an interview, as you can see, we don't tell you to buy it. We tell you to email me. The reason why is because we're going to give you a few guys to interview and you can interview them and talk to them and see what they know and what they can do and what you need them to do. If you like them, you hire them. If you don't like them, you say sorry, goodbye, and that's it. That's the lesson. Any questions? I'm going to stay around for a few minutes in case anyone has any questions. If not, then have a good evening and thank you for coming.